Good afternoon and happy Thanksgiving Eve. Uh, welcome to my daily chat. This is episode number 538. And the topic today is painting over rust. How relationships are like car repair. <laughs> That's an interesting analogy. We'll have some fun with this one. Before I jump in though, let me introduce myself. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and a relationship attraction expert and help strong, successful women attract and create balance in life, love, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, and every day for almost two years now, I've done these talks on Facebook Live, yes, right, that's where I do them, and I'll tell you how to find me at other places, uh, called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. And today's topic, and today's episode is number 538, and the topic today is Painting Over Rust, How Relationships Are Like Car Repair. I actually may do an analogy about how relationships are like cars, but we'll see if I get there. But let's start off with car repair first, and particularly painting over rust. Like, what does that mean? Um, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I, again, I do these on Facebook Live first. They will go onto YouTube, and then there's my podcast later. I'll give you the links at the end about those. But I want to start with this. Um, it's actually something that just showed up in one of my talks. I was actually interviewed um, last. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you, Steve. Good to see you, my friend. Um, and happy, happy Thanksgiving to you and your family and uh, I look forward to seeing you one of these days we never cross paths because we live in different parts of the country and nice to see you sir um, so I was interviewed on my friend Demona's, Demona Hoffman's uh, radio show, sorry live video podcast, I guess you can put it that way um, last week and it aired and it went onto YouTube today so I just posted the link to that on my page because we had a lot of fun in the middle of the talk I shared about, I was, I was talking about something and said you know, if you don't do your own work, which is what I'm going to get to, basically it's like painting over rust. And if you ever if you ever try painting over rust on a car, or if you know anybody's done this, let me just break it down for you what it's like. If you have a, <laughs> I've got to do some car, me car mechanic stuff here right now. So, and I'll get to the relationship piece in a minute. So bear with me. Oh, and also by the way, I'll give you the links at the end. I did say about that. Yes, I'll give you the links at the end. So, <laughs> scattered today. Let's stay present. If you've ever attempted to do this, and I did this a long time ago, never doing it since, but a long time ago I had this idea about cleaning up the way a car looked, particularly the rust spots, by just spraying paint over the top of it. It was a clunker, it wasn't a nice car, so forgive me for my transgressions against old cars. It's back in England. But uh, one thing is very clear. If you have rust on a car and you spray paint over it, it doesn't stop the rust. In fact, what happens is the rust will just bubble up straight through the paint within a few months, depending on the weather and the humidity, and the moisture, but guarantee that paint will not cover up the rust. It will be um, overcome by the rust. Sorry, the, the paint will be overcome by the rust. What's it going to do with relationships, you may be thinking? Well, let me tell you. Um, and I'm just thinking how I want to frame this, because I want to make sure it comes across in a way that makes sense, but also is sensational enough to get your attention, because some people are going to go, oh, yeah, I've heard this before. Because the thing is, I'm, what I'm talking about is not new. It's not unusual and it's not rare. But in my work as, I hate to use this as a coach, but coach slash counselor, there's no word in between the two for me right now, but it's both roles that I play in my counseling for my clients, in my work for my clients. One thing is very obvious. All of us, people, human beings, men and women, not one or the other, are, how do you say this in a polite way? We come with baggage, <laughs> simply put. And that sounds like a very generic term, but I'm going to break this down more clearly. But the thing about it is, if we, if we don't put down that baggage and fix it, it'll be tied to us automatically, dragging behind us like a, well, like a weight, because this is a weight, into every single relationship we get into. Like the rust that goes up through the paint, the issues that are in those suitcases won't go away on their own. It doesn't matter how much you gloss over them or, make an, or get into a new relationship and get at the old one. Because some people... Some people, not you, I'm sure, but some people, when the stuff comes up for them in their relationship, they'll think it's the relationship's fault and they'll quit their relationship, go to the next one. That's the painting of a rust idea. So what people will be doing is avoiding, and certain people, not everybody, it's certain people, will be doing is they'll be avoiding their own issues by changing out partners. Or in some cases, and I'm not going to degrade the, the, this common thing, but in the sex positive community, they'll just get more and more partnerships in their polyamorous desires. I'm not saying polyamory. I'm not saying that po I, I'm not saying. Let me be clear about this. The polyamory is because of this, 
But some people in, the, whether it's monogamy or polyamory, people will tend to just switch partners up or change partners or expand their partnership pool in the polyamorous community to avoid dealing with their baggage. And again, like baggage, or just, let's say like, like rust coming through um, new paint, the baggage doesn't go away on its own. It, I'm sorry, it doesn't. I wish I could wish, wait, 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 magic wand over your head <laughs> and drop it on you. Yes, baggage like rust. Thank you, I agree for that. And this is the thing that most people don't even think about this. They go, well, that's just who I am. I can't do anything about this. Take me as I am, you know, love me or leave me type thing. And, and it sounds so um, <laughs> selfless, not quite. But the truth is that when you're with somebody in a relationship, ideally you want to be the best you can be, don't you? I don't believe most people want to be in a relationship just to dump their stuff on them. It's like moving to your friend's house and jumping all the suitcase on them and say, here, you unpack. That's not fair. And it's also not respectful and it's not healthy either. So now moving to the baggage claim area <laughs> from, the, from the rust paint. But in the same analogy is if you, for example, get back to the beginning. So if you wanted to have paint stick to the paintwork and to be properly done, you've got to scrape off the rust first. You've got to scrape off the rust clean up the surface, make sure there's no rust there at all. Then you can paint over the top with primer and then top coat and you've got a healthy, healthy. You've got a clean looking car that will stay that way. So that key, that piece, I want to make sure you get that because it requires work to get rid of the rust first so you can paint properly. This is exactly the same in relationships. If you want to get rid of the stuff that's in the way of having a healthy relationship because the baggage is still there, you've got to be willing to unpack the suitcases and empty them out and get rid of what's in them and get rid of them in a very um, healthy way, not just like pretend they're gone because it doesn't work that way. Now, some some other avoidance behaviors that people have when it comes to their baggage. For some people, again, as I said before, some people just change out their partners thinking, oh, it's not me, it's the relationship, it must be them, I just need to change another partner. I tried that for a while, it didn't work. And for anybody who's tried it, I guarantee it doesn't work. It just postpones the inevitable. It may sound good, like, okay, it's fine. I'll just dump the relationship and get a new one because you know maybe for you that the stuff doesn't show up until six months into the relationship. So you'll live in five-month relationships to avoid it. Some people do that. Other people will choose to bury themselves in work so they can avoid the relationship. Some people would cheat on their partner to avoid the issues at home and then to make issues worse because they're now cheating on their partner to avoid stuff. Some people will just turn to some form of addiction, drugs, alcohol, sports, um, gambling, there are so many things people do to not face their own demons. Yes, in the suitcases are demons, by the way. Oh, I didn't tell you that part earlier, did I? Did I? Yes, inside the suitcase, <laughs> or suitcases, or, or steamer trunks, or, you know, um, hope chests, I'm just using all the words for, case, for language I can use, are actual demons. No, no, excuse me, not actual demons, virtual demons. What's a virtual demon? A virtual demon is your haunted belief from the past of how things were different. And for most people, the the dysfunctional history that they've simply buried away and stuck away. It's like when you are, um, I'm coming with analogies galore tonight. If you're basically at home and you don't want to deal with the lo with with the laundry, you may throw your dirty stuff under the good stuff to make it look clean. Like if you're not trying to make your house presentable, and you've never done this, I'm sure, you've hidden all the dirty laundry underneath the good the clean laundry, so that you can um, make everything look perfect. Meanwhile, you've got smelly laundry underneath that's just making the good the good laundry smell bad too. Same thing applies. If you don't do the work, clear out your baggage, you're gonna drag it into the next relationship. And this is the thing. You're, you're dragging that aromatic stuff with you from relationship to relationship to relationship. It ain't gonna be fixed by the other person. They may promise to love you through thick or thin and, and for, for richer, for poorer, for, for, um, for well, ill and for well, all these different things. But the reality is at some point they're gonna go, it's, I'm done. Because it's not their job, it's yours. Your stuff, your responsibility that simple. So what to do about it? As I mentioned in the analogy early on about how if you want to get rid of the rust on the, uh, if you want to stop the rust coming through the paint, you've got to get rid of the rust by scraping it off the metal and then you can put new paint on top and it works okay. That's mechanic, that's painting 101. <laughs> Very basic for car repair. In relationship or in your own life, that scraping off the rust is dealing with your past baggage. It's getting some help, guidance, counseling, support, coaching, whatever that is. I have to offer a lot of that in my work. But to resolve those old issues, those old aberrations of behavior, those old patterns of in, 
of um, limited value so you can actually get what you want. Because for anybody who's looking for a healthy relationship, you need to do some self-examination first. If you can look in the mirror, honestly, honestly, and see in your eyes that there's nothing else being had around, no history in the past, no junk, no baggage, no old patterns, no limiting beliefs, no bad behaviors, no addictions, no avoidance, all, none of that stuff is in there, then go right ahead and get on a new relationship. But if any piece of that is in there, and you'll know if you're honest with yourself, then before you inflict yourself, hmm, before you inflict yourself on a new relationship partner, do them and you a favor and stop before you get there. Take the time to get with somebody who can coach you, counsel you, guide you. I can do that. And really get clear what's in the way. What patterns keep showing up in every relationship? This is a key, this is a key by the way. If you don't recognize what those, those trunks and luggage and suitcases are you're dragging from relationship to relationship to relationship are, just look back at your last two, three, five, ten relationships. Notice, become aware of, and be willing to see those past um, behaviors, ways of being, interactions, upsets, challenges, whatever they were, they happened every single time. Because I can pretty much guarantee you that suitcase, that those, those virtual demons, have shown up every single time you've been in a relationship because they're inside of you, not inside of them. So they won't change based on your partner, they're actually inside of you. So I hope this is making sense. Because if you're like, well, if you're anything like me, and you're probably not because I'm unique <laughs> in a weird sort of way, you may become aware that some relationships are repeating themselves. Different partners, but the same relationship experience. I had that myself in more than one instance where I went, oh, that ain't them anymore, that's me. If you had that inclination or that awareness going, oh, it isn't them, it's me, this is a good time to get some help. Um, actually, it's a very good time with me personally because I have to have some special, I'm doing some holiday specials in my coaching. But if you want to find out more about that, you can let me know. I'll, get, I, I'll, I'll put a link in the comments for a, a discovery session, a consult, so we can talk. And I can tell you what I'm offering because there's something special, but I'm not going to put it in the broadcast directly. No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm just checking in myself on that one. So once you get clear about what's in the way, you can do something about it because the, for the first step is awareness. You may be sitting there going, I don't need baggage. I don't drag any stuff around. I'm not sure why things are going wrong in my relationships. Be willing to step back from that for a second. Be willing to scan your past history and to look at your past relationships and look through the eyes of an observer versus an invested partner and see where you notice where you had the same thing happen for yourself in that relationship that wasn't working, that was bad or wasn't good, whatever you want to phrase it that way. That's your clue. And it's the first sign or the first step towards changing it because you can't fix things until you know what the things are that you need to fix. Sounds obvious to me. So if you really want to have a nicely painted car, <laughs> as an analogy, you've got to get rid of the rust. If you want to have an amazing relationship, you've got to get rid of the baggage. It's that simple. Um, I think I made my point. I'm going to keep this one somewhat short and, and somewhat distinct. Yesterday's broadcast was, a, was too brief and I, I got distracted so I ended up shut, cutting off early. So I'm sure I get this point across. It, it really is this simple, you know? I'm saying to Barbara, when you looked, looked in your bag, I'd put all my diamonds and kept my demons. Ooh, interesting. Actually, I need to read that one again with my glasses. I'm going to read this one because I can't see it. I looked in my bag, I had put all my diamonds and kept my demons. You mean you'd, lo you'd lost your diamonds, Barbara? Um, yeah, the thing is, there's, that's the other thing, by the way. Um, I don't want to play it that way, I was going to say, using the analogy of suitcases. But the truth is, you, you all, everyone has wonderful gifts, diamonds, if you want to call it jewelry, these valuable pieces they have in themselves. Those are with you all the time. But you've, repla you've hidden them. You haven't replaced them, you've hidden them. With this junk in your suitcase is junk in the in the trunk, so to speak, the the steamer trunk. Just to be clear, what I'm talking about here, that gets in the way of expressing your your true diamonds. If you want to use that analogy as well. So, my my um, yeah. So my invitation to you is to get support, whether it's with me or somebody else. If this is something that speaks to you, where you realize there's something out of alignment for what you want, it truly is. Well, it's truly fixable, first of all, and you deserve to have what you want. Then he wasn't. Then he weren't yourself. Yeah, absolutely, Barbara. I understand that. So, you definitely deserve to have the best. You deserve to have an amazing relationship. You definitely deserve to shine your your diamonds everywhere, as it were, so to speak, from Barbara's comment. 
and the and the reality is you can have it it generally doesn't come just by just sitting there and hoping it will happen it takes steps of action action steps in fact so again I'll put the link in the comments for a discovery session the consult you can reach out to me in chat and we can talk about it um, I'll also put the self-love practice in there again because it's a reminder that you can do that as well because when is if actually to play off Barbara's comment about the diamonds if your diamonds are getting dusty and needs to be cleaned up self-love practice is a great way to do it <laughs> I had to do it that was too obvious it was right in front of me so I'll put the link to the self-love practice in the comments as well so you can check that out um, and let you know that I'm here to help I wish you well before I get to that quick quick tags to where you find my broadcast this is a Facebook live as I mentioned at the beginning it goes on my business page on Facebook which is Barry Selber the author I also put, I put it on my YouTube channel which is um, my channel is Barry Selby. You can subscribe to my channel, please. And, uh, and you can then look, you look in my playlist for Messages for the Masculine. And also eventually on my podcast on iTunes, which is also called Messages for the Masculine. You can subscribe and download there. Um, again, I've put the links in the comments for my invitation. If you want to find out about the coaching specials I'm running, I'm running, it sounds so crazy, I'm running coaching specials. Three, uh, three of them? Three of them that are not on my website, not, not visible on my website anyway. My coaching is normally a three, three to six month commitment. If you want to go that deep, we can talk. But I'm offering some holiday specials. Single session, um, a one month half price deal, and also a four, sh four session economy ride. <laughs> I'm just making stuff up in terms of names, but I've got them all available. So if you want to find out more about those, reach out to me. Um, oh yes, any questions or comments, please put them, please put them below. I'll, resign, I'll respond and sign up, whether it's on YouTube or on Facebook. Um, Tomorrow is Thanksgiving, so first of all, wish you a very happy Thanksgiving if you're in America. And if you're not in America, you won't want to talk, won't you care what I'm talking about because it's just another day for you on Thursday. Tomorrow's broadcast, I'm not sure where it's going to be yet. So it may, you may be seeing it in replay if you're coming later in the day, or you may catch it live if you catch me during the day. I'm not sure my timing because I have Thanksgiving dinner to go to. You know, even though I'm English, I do live in America, so Thanksgiving is on my plate, as it were. So I wish you a wonderful time. Take care of yourselves. I'll be back in tomorrow at some point during the day. Not a short time yet. Usually 5 p.m. Pacific time is my normal time, but tomorrow we'll see. I thank you for watching as always. If you have any questions or comments below is where you put them. And I will see you again sometime tomorrow. Take care of yourself. And uh, stop dragging your suitcase around. It's time you let it go. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.